Hi, I'm Greg Wilson. Uh, I spent a uh, little over nine years with the PCAOB, uh, focused primarily on internal control over financial reporting and helping develop the inspector's approach to audits of internal control over financial reporting. Today we're going to talk about the amount of documentation that you need to have for your internal controls. And I'm going to answer that question for you. How much documentation? The answer is it really depends. It depends on a number of factors, as I'm sure you can imagine. It depends on the complexity of your business, the complexity of your controls, the complexity of the accounting surrounding your business, and the transactions that you're trying to monitor. So you really can't have a bright line definition of what is the right amount of documentation. Uh, you just need to make sure that your documentation I always like to say it's got the four C's, that it's clear, that it's concise, that it's consistent, and it's current. And if you apply that to all aspects of your documentation, you'll end up with what I consider would be the right documentation. It's also important for you to have a good documentation that the auditor can use in their audit of your internal controls. While your internal controls are necessary to conduct your business, and probably you have very strong controls at the process level and, and working on up through the organization, the auditor needs to add, understand how your controls work, where the risks are within your processes, so that they can identify, using a top-down approach, those controls to test. Now let me just mention one other thing in terms of documentation. I've heard many users say, the auditors come to them and say to them, the PCAOB is making me do certain things, um, either requiring you to have more documentation or do different uh, tests and procedures. I want to translate that for you. That phrase, the PCA made me do it, is really uh, auditor speak for I did not follow professional standards and the PCAOB brought it to my attention. So I think it's important for you to have a general understanding of what the auditor's responsibilities are in terms of giving their opinion on your internal controls. The importance of communicating with your auditor uh, can't be overemphasized and I think it's also important for you to understand generally how the auditor is expected to go about doing their testing of your internal controls under the auditing standards. So stay tuned for my next video. We're gonna talk a little bit about the auditor's responsibilities. Thank you.